Hello! I'm so glad that you decided to come back again and listen to John Patton and his story. And do you remember what happened last time we were talking about John Patton? He had just worked himself right out of a job. Ugh, oh, poor John Patton. What was he going to do now? He lost his teaching job, but remember, he got a mysterious letter. What did that letter say? Ah, oh, it said, we've been watching you, John Patton. Who was it from? It was from the Glasgow City Mission. They were offering John a job with them. We want you to come and work with us. Oh, John's new job would to be help, to help people of Glasgow and also to tell them about Jesus. Do you think that would be a good job for John? It was. It was right what he wanted. John prayed right away after receiving the letter and said, Thank you, Father, for the new job. Every day, John got up early and went door to door telling people about Jesus. Why does he bother with us, they said. Huh, why doesn't he just leave us alone? But John kept right on going from door to door, inviting people to meetings and telling them about how Jesus could save them from their sins. It took many months, but finally he started to see people come, come to the meetings and come to know Jesus as their Savior. Meanwhile, there were some men who didn't believe the Bible was God's word. They actually thought it was very silly. They would say, there's no God. One of these men had a whole library full of books that taught that there was no God. But one day this man became very sick and he thought he was going to die. His wife asked John to come and visit her husband. John knelt beside the man's bed and he started to talk to the man about God and read to him from the Bible. He said, God loves you very much. He wants to take away all your sins and give you a home in heaven when you die. The man had never really heard the good news that Jesus Christ had come to pay for his sin so that he could have a home in heaven when he died. After several visits from John, the man believed in Jesus as his savior from sin. Oh, what a great day that was. The man wanted all his friends now to know that Jesus was his savior and that he had given his life to him. So he asked his wife and daughter to take all those books that mocked God and to tear them into pieces and then throw them into the fireplace. After that, he told everybody what Jesus had done for him and his life was completely changed. One day, a lady came to Mr. Patton. She said, oh, won't you please, please come and help. She took him to a young man who couldn't stop drinking alcohol. And what was worse, he, he would try to kill himself too. John felt so very sorry for this man. So he decided to come and visit him. And he stayed up with him very late one night with the young, with the young man and talked with him. We'll read the Bible together, John said. God can help you. They opened the Bible, and John started to pray for the man and talk to him about the things of God. He said, now let's pray together. I can't pray, said the young man. Well then, tell the Lord that you can't pray. He put his hand on the man's shoulder and said, just try to pray. The man cried out, and he said, Lord, you know I can't pray. John started praying for him, and soon the man calmed down and even fell asleep. The next morning, when the man awoke, he was completely changed, totally changed. He believed in Jesus as his Savior from sin, and God had changed him from the inside out. He stopped drinking, and he stopped trying to kill himself. The young man told everyone what Jesus had done for him. Only the Lord can save from sin, he would say. Now, not everyone was happy with the work that John was doing. In fact, one day, John was walking down the street when out of nowhere, a big stone came flying through the air and hit him in the head, knocked him to the ground. His head was bleeding. 
time no one came to help. Other times his enemies would try to take pots of boiling water and throw them on him as he would rush, as he would walk down the, the sidewalk. Even though John was very happy with his mission work, he did not mind people's hatred of him. And he loved his work in Glasgow. But he did keep on thinking about the people of Vanuatu. What about them? He knew they were an island. And they needed Christ desperately. And there were no missionaries, or very few at that time, that were willing to go. He knew of two other missionaries who had gone about 15 years earlier. They had died at the hand of the cannibals at their first step on the island and had been eaten. But John still knew that these people, despite their hatred of men, needed to know that Christ loved them. Now John knew his church had wanted to send a missionary to those islands. And he wanted to shout, here am I, send me. But he was afraid it wasn't God's will. Maybe God wanted him right here, right here in Glasgow. So he decided to pray about it, just as his father has always, had always done. Now put up your thumb if you think John Patton would stay in Glasgow. Now put your thumb down. Now put your thumb up if you think John was going to go to Vanuatu, too. God told John, go to Vanuatu. John went to the leaders in ch of the church and said, I am willing to go. They were so excited. For the next year, John would study the Bible and medicine in order to get himself ready to help the people of Vanuatu. One day, an elderly Christian man came up to him. He said, I hear, I hear you are going to those islands where they eat people. Well, don't go. You'll be killed and eaten there. What do you think John thought? Well, he decided to go home and talk to his parents about it. John, his father said, we have prayed for you since you were a tiny little baby boy. We've given you to God. We hoped he would call you to be a missionary. And now he has. After a lot of studying and preparing, John and his new wife, Mary, got on a big ship and sailed for Australia. It took several months to get to Australia because travel then took a lot longer in 1858. But at last, they arrived in Australia. They were one step closer to Vanuatu. John loaded his belongings onto the ship, along with his wife's, and they sailed for the islands. After 12 more days, they finally saw Vanuatu, but the captain wouldn't take them ashore. Oh no, not with cannibals on that island. He was going nowhere near there. Instead, they had to signal for a mission boat to come and pick them up. The captain was in such a hurry to get out of the way that he sideswiped the little boat and broke the tail mast. John pulled his wife out of the way just in time. It almost had crushed her as well. Because they had no way to steer the boat though, they were now tossed to and fro on the waves of the ocean. But one of the missionaries on a nearby island saw their trouble and came with a boat to rescue them. When they finally landed on the island of Tana, John Patton couldn't wait to tell the people about Jesus. But first, he would need to learn their language, and they would also need to build a house for themselves. As they were building, they often heard fighting going on outside of their house. And as if the fighting wasn't enough, the people on Tana were horrible at, at stealing. They would steal anything they could. It had been raining hard one day, so John decided to put some blankets out on the line to dry, for they were quite soaked from getting wet. All of a sudden, one of the tribal chiefs came out from nowhere and came running up to John. Missy, come quick, come quick, I want to tell you something, he said. He ran into the house with John following after him. In a minute, John heard some of the mission workers saying, Come quick, Mr. Patton, come quick. He hurried out to find the chief's men, stealing all their blankets. The chief had tricked him. But that wasn't the worst of it. 
War could start at any time, Montana. When John heard that the inland people and the harbor people were fighting again, he decided he would try to stop them. But would he be able to? Or would they kill him instead? You're going to have to come back tomorrow to find out.